Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Yvette with Yvette's Junk Journal Shop. And I had started this video and realized that um, the camera was not recording. So I've already started a little bit here. So these are, uh, this is my journal that I'm making one of two for this month for the hashtag 12 by 12 junk journal challenge. And in my last video, I showed how I do the stitching on here, the slow stitching that I did. So I have now completed the whole cover here and I'm kind of up close right now because I'm going to be showing you how to add beads to the little vines that I stitched on there. So the inside of this is not done yet. Um, I don't like to get too far on the inside. It makes it heavy to work on with the beads. So I kind of do the outside, put the um, cardboard in there or the chipboard so that I have some sort of structure to it. It's a little easier to add the beads to a, a solid surface. And then um, I started adding the beads up here in the corner, as you can see. And then I realized my camera wasn't on. So what I did was I have a, I have size 11 seed beads here. I have a Nymo size uh, zero thread, which I've doubled. And then I tied a knot and I started in the back here, kind of came up under this little lip here and just wove my way up with very tiny stitches so you can't see them until I got up here and added the first bead. And then I'm just adding the beads as I go. So um, that's kind of where we're at. And I'm just going to continue because to start over I'd have to tear all that out and it's going to probably show. So when you have a doubled thread it does get caught on a lot of things so I kind of hold it like this when I'm working. And you always want to check and make sure, see how this bead doesn't quite come down the needle. So I'm using a tulip needle. They're a little bit stiffer and more rigid than an English needle. This is a size 11. Um, so it's a little bit on the bigger side. But um, I like it because it's a little stiffer needle. So you put the bead on, slide it down to where you're going to be working. And I've come up right next to this little couch over stitch that made the loop here on the vine. So I've come up on that. And you just want to take a little tiny stitch. You don't want to go down in the same hole or the bead will come off. So you want to make a little tiny stitch there. And what I do is go under and I'm going to come out on this side to add that bead over there. So you're going to want to line your stitch up so that it comes out right there by your um, embroidery stitch. And then you're just going to pull this down. You need to be careful here. You see how that loops up. You want to make sure that that thread gets pulled through. So just pull on the thread until it's even. Uh, the thread is kind of slippery when it's first on there. So again, make sure that bead slides down. I just put all the ones that don't work for me off to the side. You're going to slide that bead down. And then um, again, you're just going to come up and you, I'm going to turn this around because it's a little easier to work on here. And I'll try to make sure I'm in frame on this. I showed this in another video. I wasn't quite in frame. So you're going to come down here, a little stitch next to that. And you're going to, this is the hard part, is getting this needle to come up where you want it. So just kind of keep poking there until you get it where you want it on that next little leaf or flower, whatever I call them leaves. And you're going to pull that so it's kind of tight. You don't want the material to buckle. Then put another bead on, make sure it goes down. And you're just going to continue this process on each one of these. So we're going to come up here. I found if I work across from each other rather than up the vine and then back down it uh, goes a little quicker for me so that's just how I do it you can adjust that as need be again we're going to come right down here and you're going to try to find that spot where you want that bead to be be careful 
like I did here, not to go through the material. Again, we're going to pull that down, get that bead adjusted, and then add our next bead. So that's basically how I do this. Sorry about that. We're just going to go back and forth so that thread is not quite where I want it. Well, it'll be okay if I add a bead there. Just be sure to take a very small stitch there or it will show the thread and we don't want that. And just put another one on. And then I just continue along um, adding beads, finding the right kind of bead. Adding a bead, coming back across. And then I'll just continue to do this, probably finish out this uh, little vine here so you guys can at least see what that looks like. So these beads are not very uniform, but that's okay. So I'm finding on this crease here, I'm having to go across. So however, you need to get to where you need to be, that's the easiest for you. Yeah, see that bead didn't want to fit, so. It's always best to make sure that I'm sliding it down. Like I said, these are not the best beads here. Just something I had in my stash and I liked the color. So I'm using white thread on this because these are a yellow green lined transparent bead. Um, so they, they look really cool on here. I think it just adds that little pop of color. It's a little more neon green than what I have in the kit that I'm using, um, but it looks really nice on there. I think it pulls the colors together well. And we're going to push this over to where we want it. I hope this is in focus in in frame and you guys can see this time what I'm doing. <laughs> Felt so bad last time that I was off camera, but it you kind of get involved in what you're doing and forget to check if you're in frame or not. And don't worry if you're not quite as quick as I am here. I know I going pretty quickly, but I've done bead work for a long time, so you're not going to be this fast the first time you try this. Probably going to want to do one vine and call it good, but it is very rewarding when you get it all done and it looks good. Be careful pulling that thread through so that if you pull it through too quick you're going to get a knot and you don't want that so just take your time with it. Beadwork is a consuming, time consuming process. It's not easy. There we go. I'm almost done here. And I'll do a slow scan so you guys can see how that turned out. And what I plan to do is all of these vines are going to get this treatment. So I'm having a little difficulty here. So I'm going to try to just pop it up to this next one. So you'll see as you get into the middle section here, it's going to get harder to get that needle where you want it. Especially since I'm trying to keep my beads from rolling around and stay on camera and do all the things I need to do. So let's see here. I'm going to set this down a minute so that I can 
get a little leverage on there. I think you guys are understanding what I'm doing here. So let me just try to pop this up. See how we're manipulating the needle. So that's why I like to have the tulip needles. They are a lot more expensive than other beading needles, but I like them because they are a little more rigid. So somewhere here I have my thread. Oh, it's got clear over here on the corner. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay, I'm showing you everything that can go wrong. That's good. And then just pull those through. So not every time will you have trouble with the thread being even. This time it just seems to want to give me all the troubles so you guys can see what might happen. Again, we're going to put that bead on. I'm going to come straight across, hopefully. Okay, this one is eluding me. There we go. Pull that thread down. Pick up your next bead that's going to fit. And then we're going to put our last bead on up here at the top of this. And then we'll move over here to this vine. This is a really tight spot here. And we'll just continue to put those beads on. I'm going to put these two on since I'm here. And they're kind of close so you guys can get an idea of what that looks like. Slow and steady wins this race, <laughs> for sure. All right, let's see. All right, and I'm going to pop my needle up right here so that I will be ready for the next one I'm going to put on. Put my needle over here so that uh, I can take you guys through this and show you how that turned out. So there we're going to have all those little beads along there. And I'm going to do the whole um, cover like that everywhere where those little ends of the leaves are. I'll put a bead on there. So the next video I should have this uh, cover completed. I will have put the bases in on this, the inside cover, and then um, I'll put a piece of fabric down here to reinforce this and then I'll probably put another piece of chipboard in here to fill this in and then I'll cover a piece of cardboard with probably uh, cardstock and make inside covers for that and then I'll put the signatures in sew those in and they're going to be exposed on the spine over here so um, that'll be kind of cool with the beads going across there and then there's the back of it I'll just do, I'm going to do beadwork all the way around on that. So I haven't decided yet if I want to put a beadwork trim around the edge or not. That's to be decided. Maybe if this is enough frustration for one day, I won't do that, but we'll see. And then um, the signatures that are going in that are from my Woodland Wonder Kit and my um, Sunflower Power Kit. And it's going to be these two signatures in this one. And then the sister journal will be very similar to this, but it's going to have a little bit more brightness to it because it's going to be a little sister. And even though sisters are alike, they are different. So uh, the little sister is going to have a little bit more color to it. And the big sister journal is going to be a little more neutral. So please join me in my next video where I hopefully will have this completed and check out my other videos. I sell journals from journal artists all over the world. I have supplies and um, ephemera, handmade ephemera from myself and several other artists as well. So check that out in my Kofi shop. That's Yvette's Junk Journal Shop. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great day.